Hey guys, it's Tim. Ooh. <coughs> All of a sudden, I started talking and I had to cough. Sorry about that. Hey guys, it's Tim, and this is Pro Wrestling Unlimited, as it's Friday, and that means tonight was Friday Night SmackDown. I thought tonight's SmackDown was a pretty good show. We got the debut of Tamatonga, which was really, really cool. Not in the role I thought he was going to be in, but in a role that didn't shock anybody as a member of the Bloodline. And what may be the new bloodline, we'll get into all that and give our hypotheses, hypotheses, maybe that's the right word, our suggestions, our, our, yeah, we'll tell you what we think, how about we just go with that route, tell you what we think, but I think actually, oh, what could have happened with Tamatonga and um, Solo Sokoa going forward, but it was a great show, fun show. We got a WrestleMania rematch set for next week with AJ Styles and LA Knight. The winner goes on to Backlash to challenge Cody Rose for the WWE Championship, so that should be fun as well. I think it's going to be AJ Styles. Cody's the babyface. AJ's the heel. AJ lost at Mania, so we'll give him his win back by beating LA Knight, but even bigger because he gets a title shot. It was just, it was just my suggestion. My prediction, but with that, so much to talk about, so let's get that brick and roll out of the way. I want to say thank you for joining us here. Twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited, YouTube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited, and podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. Remember, if you are watching live on Twitch, you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either hit that donate button down below or donate Twitch bits in the live chat. It's a great way to get your comment, question, or concern read live on the air. Also remember, if you're Watching on YouTube, you can help us out and support us one of two different ways. You can either do so with a tier subscription, or you can do so with Amazon Prime. Because remember, if you have Amazon Prime, then you have Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming gives you a lot of cool things like free games, free stuff for games, and you always get one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month. And I greatly appreciate it if you did right here, Pro Wrestling Unlimited. Also, remember, if you're watching on YouTube, help us out over there. Hit that subscribe button. That way you know when we post new videos. That way you know when we go live. And that way you know when we post to the community tab. Remember to hit that excuse me, join button. Become a channel member and support the channel that way. Even at the $1 tier, greatly, greatly appreciated. And don't forget, if you want to get your comment, question, or concern read live on YouTube, you can hit that uh, super chat button to donate a super chat. And finally, head over to the Epic Game Store. Head over to the Epic Game Store and buy something. Whether you're buying a new game, whether you're buying an old game, whether you're claiming a free game or getting bucks for Rocket League, Fortnite, or Fall Guys, use this code right here, PWUNLIMITED, at checkout, and you will be supporting us at no extra cost. Right now, the new free game is Ghost Runner, which is awesome. I love Ghost Runner. I've been playing that since it first came out. So if you haven't yet, go claim it on the Epic Games Store and then put in this code, P-W-U-N-L-I-M-I-T-E-D. Also, Star Wars Outlaws is now up for pre-order. So you can do that as well. I want to say thank you to Elite Tisa for the subscription, the becoming a channel member on YouTube. Really do appreciate that one. I need to figure out how to get the YouTube stuff to pop up here like it does with Twitch when someone subs or whatever on Twitch. Pops here. I need to figure out how to make that work right on YouTube. <clears throat> but with that. The Friday Night Smackdown to talk about. Nights from the Little Caesars Arena <clears throat> in Detroit, Michigan. They get a recap of WrestleMania XL. Night two's main event. And everything that ensued with Cody Rhodes beating Roman Reigns. And Cody opens the show. So Corey Graves and Wade Barrett welcomed us into the Little Caesars Arena. And then they sent it to Cody, who makes his big entrance. So Cody Rhodes makes the entrance. Comes out great. Great pop from the crowd. New stage. New setup. Let me see something really fast. Has WWE posted photos from tonight's show yet? No, they have not. Oh, they have. Did we get any new photos of the new stage? Well, so... Kind of got this one. So I'm going to see what I can find here really fast. We're going to look at this new stage. It's actually not what I thought it was going to be. As I thought the stage was going to be more similar to what we saw on Monday. But it's just a smaller condensed version of the big, um, what's it called? The big Tron that they were using a week ago. Also, very minimal pictures of Tamatanga on here. 
Actually, I can just do this here. Hold on. We're going to do something. We're going to do something real fast. We'll pop this up on the screen. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Then we could do this. So this is the new screen for, I guess, Raw and SmackDown. So it's a shorter screen. And because it's shorter, it looks wider. It is not wider than it was, but because it is shorter, it does look wider. Then there are lighting trusses up here that also house um, fireworks. And then there's fireworks you can see down here as well. But let's scroll through this really fast. I'm trying to see if there's any wide shots. I want a wide shot of the building. Also, very limited photos of Tamatonga. We've got this one here of the original, the initial attack. A little more of the initial attack. And then Solo coming in with a spike. Tamatonga raising the one. And that was it. That was it. We don't even get Solo doing the, the hip attack. You know, Bailey with her new belt. And that's all they've uploaded so far. So that's all we've got so far for photos of tonight's SmackDown. Maybe they just haven't uploaded everything yet. We'll get more. Anywho, back to this. Rhodes talked about how The Rock's appearance on Raw made him think of a particular Detroit native and a particular line known, uh, they're known for. He said, who the hell told you tonight is open mic night, bitch? He did it different than his wife, but he still paid tribute to his wife, Brandy Rhodes. Because that was Brandy's thing. If you never saw the original clip, Cody's in the ring. Jade Cargill comes out talking trash to Cody. And Brandy just walks out. Who the hell told you tonight's open mic night, bitch? Super... One of the most famous clips in all of AEW history, in my opinion. Like, I see that used more than almost any other clip from AEW in their five-year history. <clears throat> um, I usually don't do this because he didn't donate, but he did become a member. So I'll read his comment. He's Elite Tiss says, Solo, Tiffany, and Braun. The future looking good. Very true. All three young stars. And I say that, stars. I'm not just saying, oh, young talent. No, young stars. All three are going to be stars. So, Cody addresses how a rock confrontation on Monday felt like a wartime overture. Are we, hold on, give me one second. Are we not live on? There we go. Twitch wasn't showing me that we were live. He says it feels like a, a wartime overture. And that he'd be waiting for Rock once he returns from Hollywood. He switched gears to the upcoming Backlash pay-per-view and says six men will battle it out tonight with only one eventually challenging him at Backlash. He then ran down all the guys. And it was kind of weird because he's running everybody down and he goes, Bobby Lashley? And almost gets no reaction. He goes, Bobby Lashley? And still almost gets no reaction. Which is weird. Crowd in Detroit did not care for Bob Lashley. Excuse me. So, uh, Cody says that he has seized up the competition and could potentially face of, of who he could uh, who he could potentially face. Rhodes says that he no longer is the hunter, but is now the hunted, and that if six men are vying for a shot, quote, they best not miss. He then reiter uh, reintroduced himself once more, once undesirable, unden. Turned undeniable and now undisputed WWE champion. So if you see, did it again tonight. They're phasing out that word universal. They're phasing out that word universal champion. So we're getting it back to just undisputed WWE champion. Also, I'll, I'll just say it now. Bailey called herself undisputed for some reason. She said, I'm the undisputed WWE woman's champion. I don't know about that. You're not undisputed. The only reason Cody's belt's undisputed because they merged the WWE and the Universal. So Bailey and Rey Mysterio were shown showing up at the building. Well, it was Bailey and the LWO. Then things started to get interesting. Backstage, 
Bloodline Souls Co. and Jimmy Uso were shown standing in front of Cody Rhodes' locker room, which normally would be the Bloodline's locker room. Kevin Owens walked into the room as Sol Sokoa said he'd taken uh Solo Sokoa said that he'd taken care of it. Paul Heyman told Solo, uh, that's the champion's locker room. And since the bloodline doesn't have the championship and wins and losses matter, that carries consequences. And that's why it's Cody's locker room. Solo said that uh, he then said that by orders of the tribal chief, we are to get the undisputed WWE championship back the bloodline and solo was like i got it <clears throat> we got a promo for raw in montreal where they confirmed we already knew this sammy's able to defend the intercontinental championship against chad gable but they also confirmed sheamus returns on monday so we got a coming sheamus is returning video last monday but they didn't tell us when yet tonight we have learned Sheamus is back on Monday in Montreal. So that's awesome. That's cool. I can't wait to see the Celtic Warrior back on Raw, back on WWE television. We haven't seen him since last August. Yes, August. Adam Copeland Edge's last match was the last time we saw Sheamus. So very cool. Can't wait to see Sheamus back and see what they do with him going forward. So we got our first of two number one contender, I guess you could call them qualifying matches or triple threat matches where the winner of each triple threat will face off next year or next week. Not next year, not next year, next week. So his first match was uh, Santos Escobar, Bob Lashley, Bobby Lashley, and L.A. Knight. Yeah. What's the bell ring? Escobar ran at night. We got double teamed by Knight and Lashley. Knight tried to roll up Lashley, but to no avail. Lashley was pulled out of the ring by Knight as they brawled for a bit before uh, as they brawled for a bit before Escobar drove them onto drove. Oh, Escobar drove them into each other. Back down, they went to a commercial. Turn from the commercial, and Lashley and Escobar were fighting in the ring. Both men were on the top turnbuckle as Escobar de uh, desperately tried to escape. Knight then jumped up to the top rope and tried to go for a superplex, but Lashley powerbombed both Knight and Escobar for a near fall. Knight then fought out of a <clears throat> phantom driver attempt by Escobar, and as he hit his Megastar elbow on him as well, got a two. Escobar then hit a... Escobar was then in his crosshairs, and Knight tried to... Knight tried to attack, but Legado Fantasma came in and... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> came in to make the save. He flattened him, and they hit a triple power bomb. He laid waste to Bobby Lashley as well before the Street Profits would run in and take out Angel and Berto. Remember, triple threat means no disqualification. Lashley then took Escobar down with a flatliner and locked on his finish after a spear. Escobar then dodged it, though, and caused Lashley to crash to the ring post. Knight then snuck in BFT and picked up the win for L.A. Knight, yeah. So LA Knight will move on next week to face the other triple threat winner, which we know is AJ Styles, for a shot at the WWE Championship at Backlash in France. I thought this was a good, fun opening match. Very, very, very good. All three men worked well together. Probably could have done without the interference, but then they also at the same time, the interference made it, it made LA Knight look stronger because he got taken out and then was able to still come back and persevere. Backstage, the LWO were being interviewed by Kayla Braxton. Rey Mysterio said that whether it was Santos Escobar or Ridge Holland, karma was going to bite them. Kayla Braxton told Mysterio that Escobar denied attacking Lee, Dragon Lee last week. But Mysterio switched topics by saying that he was going to win the number one contenders triple threat tonight and then move on to become the first WWE Hall of Famer to hold the championship. So then we see Solo Sokoa, Jimmy Uso, and Paul Heyman make their way out to the ring. We come back, and the Bloodline are there. Paul Heyman started this off by saying that the Bloodline offered no excuses for what happened at WrestleMania. He said, by orders of Roman Reigns, the Bloodline needed to accept accountability. Heyman said Cody Rhodes, quote, flipped the script on Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40 before he pointed out that Seth Rollins stayed true to his word of being Rhodes' shield. 
Eamon talked about how Reigns gave in to temptation and got distracted by the lust of revenge on Rollins for the Shield's destruction, and that Rhodes took advantage of it to become the new champion. Before Heyman could continue, Solo grabbed the mic and said that winning and losing matters, right? And consequences needed change. Solo stared down Jimmy and looked like he was going to slowly embrace and hug his brother. He did tell him, quote, you're my brother. I love you. Suddenly, a man in a black hoodie would jump in the ring and attack Jimmy Uso. The man would pull that hood off and reveal that it is none other than Tama Tonga. Tama Tonga would continue the attack on Jimmy Uso, and he held, he held him up for Sokoa as Sokoa hit the spike. They then threw him in the corner. Heyman was standing in one corner, kind of begging for his life, like, I didn't do anything wrong. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Sokoa then grabbed um, a steel chair. Oh, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so Paul Heyman grabs the... Um, so first off, Solo and Tama are in the ring, and Tama Tonga does the, the ones up for the acknowledgement. And then Paul Heyman's like, call Roman Reigns. And Tama Tonga, or no, Solo Skoa grabs the phone, throws it down, and stomps on it. He then goes and grabs a steel chair. So Jimmy laying, out, uh, laying in the corner, puts the steel chair all around, around the neck of Jimmy and tells him once more, I love you, brother. Heyman then shouts, this is not what the tribal chief wants. As Solo runs at Jimmy in the corner with the chair around his neck and gives him the hip attack. So they all leave. Solo, Tama, Heyman. Heyman, scared for his freaking life, is doing whatever Solo says. They get to the top of the ramp. They kind of embrace for a second. And there we go. Tama Tonga has made his WWE debut. So cool to see. So, so fun. Can't wait to see where they go. I would have liked to see him with, with Gallows and Anderson. But we've seen that before. That's what they did in New Japan. So I guess you could say it's something different. Now, Fightful does have a little more on Tama Tonga and his debut tonight as they do write the following. Tama Tonga is in WWE and the Bloodline. Tama Tonga has been eyed for WWE for quite some time and is now inserted in one of the top storylines in the company. Solo Sokoa introduced him into the Bloodline, kicking Jimmy Uso out. Tonga's official WWE debut was a long one coming and one that he was expected over the last few months. Well, it had been expected over the last few months. Thus, thus far, we haven't heard any info on if his brothers, Hikaleo or Tangaloa, are targeted by WWE. However, Jacob Fatu has been signed by WWE and was backstage at WrestleMania. One idea that has been floated internally as a possibility was Fatu teaming with Tama Tonga. Their fathers, Haku and Tonga Kid, teamed together in the 80s as the Islanders. Tama Tonga has been targeted by WWE. Tama Tonga has long been targeted by WWE. WWE had interest in him back in 2006 when they brought in AJ Styles. They brought in 2006, it's actually 2016. Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and Shinsuke Nakamura. But Tonga opted to stay in to stay in AEW, no, they wrote this all wrong, opted to stay in New Japan to work with his brothers. We reported last year that WWE had an interest in both Hikaleo and Tama Tonga, but things were held up when an official, unofficial hiring freeze took place when Vince McMahon forced his way back into the company. We haven't heard of any talks between Tama Tonga and AEW as of yet, and we're told it was a foregone conclusion that he was headed to WWE. And he and has always maintained a positive relationship with the company. So that would be really cool to see a tag team of Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga together because their dad's teamed in the past. But it's like, okay, well, we really don't need it though. Like, yeah, throw Jacob Fatu in the bloodline with these two. But I think Tama Tonga and um, Solo Sokoa, them together, those two would make a great tag team. Put the tag team titles on them. Maybe you do all three of these guys and hell, here's a fiery take. Somehow you make Roman Reigns a baby face and you bring Jey Uso back with Jimmy and Roman. So you have Roman, Jimmy, Jay against Solo, Kamatanga, and Jacob Fatu. The bloodline versus the new bloodline. 
And let's take it one step further. Wall games. Just a suggestion. Just a thought. Just a theory. So what do you guys think of Tamatonga being in WWE and potentially coming to tag team with Jacob Fatu, who has reportedly signed as well? As we move forward here on this Hakana Schmackdown. Ron Breaker came out and, well, destroyed Cameron Grimes. Breaker got started right away with two suplexes until Grimes fought out of it. Breaker then recovered and got a full head of speed. He hit a hard-hitting clothesline on Grimes. Grimes escaped and tried to leap at Breaker, who planted him with a slam. Breaker then pulled down the straps, ran at Grimes with a vicious spear, and pinned him to pick up the victory. Short and sweet and all it needed to be. Uh, Elite says too soon. Too soon for Bloodline versus New Bloodline? I didn't say do it tomorrow. The War Games ain't till November. Survivor Series. We then got the Progressive Insurance Match Flow. It was a recap of WrestleMania. They showed Stephanie McMahon, Bailey winning the woman's title, and so forth. AJ Styles was then backstage. Spoke about the upcoming Triple Threat match later tonight. He said Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens were in the way. Of something bigger. And that tonight would be the taste of what LA Knight would feel next week. Bailey came out to speak about her championship win at WrestleMania. Give me one second. My daughter's messaging me from the other room. She said, can I have more food? Because We had dinner right before this. Yes, you can have more mac and cheese. All right, there we go. Fried chicken and mac and cheese. Anywho, Bailey comes out. New woman's champion. WWE woman's champion. Huge ovation from the crowd here in Detroit as they chant, you deserve it. Bailey said that she felt damn proud to be called the new undisputed WWE Women's Champion. Not sure why she threw that word on there, but she did. She said that her win at WrestleMania felt so special because it was different. She said that it felt different because she got to be the champion of a new era, an exciting era, which represents the best women's locker room in memory. Bailey gave thanks to the fans who have been there for her for the last 11 years, thanking them for never giving up on her. Before she could continue, Bailey was then interrupted, though, by, by Tiffany Stratton. She started by saying how rude it was that she never got the opportunity at WrestleMania. She said that she accepted Bailey's supposed open challenge because, well, it's Tiffy time. Bailey then said that there wasn't no open challenge tonight, and she had someone in mind for her next challenger, namely Naomi. Stratton then protested, which prompted Naomi herself to come out. And I go, well, first off, I've never been a fan of the champion just says, I want this person to face me. I want to fight this person. No, at least they ended up doing a number one contenders match here tonight, basically. Uh, Stratton bragged about having already beaten Naomi, which prompted an immediate response. Naomi said that she couldn't accept Bailey's challenge just yet because she wanted to take Tiffany Stratton right here, right now. So that does set up Tiffany versus Naomi in just a moment after the next segment. Kayla Braxton stood in front of the doctor's office and she discussed about what happened with Jimmy Uso and Tamatonga earlier. Paul Heyman stepped out of the room with a concerned look on his face and was confronted by Tamatonga, who said, quote, by orders of the tribal chief. Ko appeared next to Tonga as the two left the scene. Heyman wondered what that all meant. So they're teasing things like tribal chief Roman? Tribal chief Dwayne? Tribal chief Solo? Is Solo the new tribal chief? Who ordered Tamatonga? Who ordered the hit on Jimmy from Tamatonga? Like, who ordered Tamatonga to take out Jimmy? Was it, was it Roman? Was it Solo? He's our new tribal chief. Maybe Dwayne's now the tribal. I don't know. I don't know. Very interesting, and I like the intrigue and mystery. So then we got Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. Good match. I, I like this. Naomi hit a nice leg drop early on on Stratton and got a two off of it. She continued the attack on Stratton's arm afterwards. Bailey was at ringside the entire time encouraging Naomi on. Stratton recovered and began to attack Naomi in the corner with repeated shoulder thrust. Stratton then tripped up Naomi and hit a running hip strike. 
to a prone opponent in the middle rope. Yumi then fought back with a drop kick as she hit Stratton with a kick from the apron. Stratton shoved Naomi into the, into the ring post and sent her crashing to the outside, which sent us to a break. When we came back, Naomi was hitting a flying crossbody and a springboard kick on Stratton. She followed this up with a running drop kick in the corner on Stratton. With her foe in position, Naomi got a splash, which Stratton barely kicked out of. Stratton then went for an O'Connor roll, followed by a double stomp. Naomi then kicked out at two. Stratton countered Naomi in the corner with a flat uh, to flatten her with a nice Alabama slam. Naomi avoided the prettiest moonsault ever, the PME, and then got the jackknife pin for the surprise victory. So Naomi does pick up the win. A little shocked how much offense Naomi got compared to Tiffany Stratton. I thought Naomi, or I thought maybe Tiffany would get more or would be more even. Naomi took a lot of this match. Naomi got a lot of this match. So the win here did earn a future shot at the title and Bailey for Naomi, which we learned will be taking place next week. So you'll get Naomi versus Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship next week. Just, like I said, I wish Tiffany would have got more offense, and it also sucks she's already lost a match. Like, she shouldn't be losing yet. Give it a couple of months. Got a video from A Town Down Under. I love this. So, we get a video from them before we... Not really much happens in the video, but what I'm going to talk about here in a moment from Grayson Waller's Twitter today was so good. So, um, Nick Aldis says that we need to figure out new challenges for the SmackDown Tag Titles. He had the Street Profits and New Catch Republic with him. Aldis said that they'd find a challenge for Austin Theory next week. We learned there's going to be a four-way tag team match. Uh, John Iconic says, Jacob Fatu will debut at NXT. I don't think so. Word is main roster. So, That was weird. My election just started going off for no reason. Tell me about an order that came earlier today. Weird. Anyways. So Austin Theory did a video today from a pool and said, I'm here in Florida. I ain't going to cold Detroit. Me and Austin Theory are the champs now. So we're taking that champ schedule, which means we don't got to show up every week. And I go, oh my God, was this so perfect? Was this just not the best? Basically, they're like, Roman Reigns is the champ, or was the champ, and didn't have to show up every week. So, uh, I'm a champ. Austin's a champ. We don't have to show up every week, because we now have that champion schedule. I'm like, oh my god, is that not the greatest thing for a heel to do? Be like, hey, if that guy got to do it as a champion, why can't we get time off as the champions? Why do we, why do, you know, why can't we dictate our own schedule? And I'm like, that's so good. I really love that. And I don't know if this was a directive from creative for um, Grayson Waller, but it kind of sounded like the way it just sounded so legit and, and genuine. It sounded like he was coming up with it himself. And it wasn't some like, hey, here's the script and here's the thing and make the video and this and that. And this, duh. It, so it's like, yeah, wild. Uh, Elite says, I have storms in spring. You're talking about like, Gonna rain where you're at. It's gonna rain here tomorrow. We're supposed to go uh, to a sprint car dirt race tomorrow. I was gonna be working it as a photographer for one of the teams, and they canceled the race due to rain. So speaking of social media videos, we got Logan Paul, the undisputed, uh, the undisputed champ, not the undisputed, the, undis the United States champion. I wrote that weird. The United States champion Logan Paul was at his house and he cut a promo about his success at WrestleMania weekend, defending his title. He then boasted. How he had a hand at WrestleMania's success. No word on his next challenger. So they got video from earlier in the day. It showed Chelsea Green and Piper Niven talking to Nick Aldis. Saying that they want opponents to show what they can do. As far as maybe wanting to be drafted to SmackDown in a couple of weeks. They're like, Let's, let us show you why you should draft us to SmackDown. So basically Nick's like, alright, I got some opponents for you. So... It was Chelsea Green and Piper Niven against the team of Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. Belair started things off with a standing spine buster on Green, who quickly tagged into Niven. 
Belair then tagged into Cargill. Niven grabbed her, or grabbed or tried to go for the tag, but Niven grabbed the hair of Jade. No, Bianca. I don't know why I said Jade. Jade had the short hair tonight and hit a sit out power bomb. Belair then avoided a diving splash and gave her time to this. This gave her time to tag into Cargill. My notes are all out of order here. Give me one second. Uh, here we go. So, then there was a glitch on the screen here. One of them cryptic messages. I guess it's another Uncle Howdy thing. It said, quote, you forgot about us. And then once the glitch was gone, it was really quick, but if you saw it, you saw it. Green became the legal woman. She tagged in. Cargill then made short work of her. Jaded, pinned her, one, two, three. Yeah, just another squash, basically, for Jade. They let Piper do some stuff with Bianca in there, but then as soon as it was Jade and Chelsea, it was like, all right, go home. So Kevin Owens was with Byron Saxton backstage. Owen wondered about the cool camera shots that they've been doing recently and grabbed Saxton's mic, and this was awesome. This was great. So he's like, follow me. And so he's walking around backstage, talking into the mic, saying that, I, hey, there's a championship belt here. It was one of the Detroit Tiger baseball championship belts, the customs. He's like, that's a cool belt. And he picks it up. He starts walking around with it. He goes, but I want another belt, the WWE championship. He got a matchup coming with Rey Mysterio and AJ Styles. I'm going to have to beat them if I want the shot. He then walks into the gorilla position and says, Jamie, take the mic. Bruce, hit my music. And then he walks out for his entrance. I loved this. What a clever, creative way to go from um, promo to intro all in one fell swoop. And then I just love her. He's like, Jamie, catch this or take this or something like that. He said, Bruce, hit my music. And then he throws the mic to Jamie Noble. I'm like, oh, wow. This is so creative. This is so good. And then Kevin Owens being the one to do it. It was, it was yeah, I love this. I love this a lot. So then that's a couple of things for next week's Friday Night Smackdown. Bailey will defend the WWE Women's Championship against Naomi. We have Fatal 4-Way number one contenders match for the tag titles. Street Profits, Authors of Pain, New Catch Republic, and Legato del Fantasma. And then a LA Knight will face, well, we now know, AJ Styles. Winner of that match moves on to Backlash to face Cody. So, speaking of AJ Styles, AJ Styles did defeat Kevin Owens and Rey Mysterio tonight. And boy, was the finish great. That avalanche... Uh, Styles clash from the middle rope on to Kevin Pinning. Oh my God, let's get into it. That started off with Mysterio and Styles mixing it up as Owens clotheslined Styles to the outside. Owens then threw Styles against the barricade and rammed him into the corner for Cannonball. Mysterio then flattened Owens with a splash, which set up for the last commercial break of the night. When we came back from the break, Styles, Owens, Mysterio, they were all fighting it out in the ring. Mysterio countered an attempted Owens power slam into a DDT as he then reversed Styles' attempt of a pile driver, it looked like at least, into a move of his own for a near fall. Mysterios then had Styles set up for a 619, but Styles grabbed the legs and caught him and then lifted him up for Yushigoroshi. Styles then began to fight Owens in the corner until Mysterio sent him to the outside. Mysterio then met Owens in the corner and got hit with a nasty superplex for, from the top rope. Mysterio then managed to kick out a two. Owens avoided standing moonsault from Styles and hit a super kick. There's a pop-up power bomb that countered a Pele kick. Mysterio then kicked Styles to stop a Styles clash attempt. Owens hit a power. Uh, Owens hit a powerful double stack German suplex on both Styles and Mysterio. Owens then flipped Mysterio into Styles, who got sent into the ropes for another six one nine attempt. Mysterio connected but couldn't capitalize because Owens got hit with a got him with a stunner off the apron. There's a swanton by Owens blocked by AJ. As Mysterio then fought AJ on the ropes. AJ then eventually would hit a Avalanche Styles Clash, basically crashing down onto Kevin Owens, rolling straight through into the pin. This was so clean and getting the one, two, three. It will now be AJ Styles versus LA Knight next week in a WrestleMania rematch. And the winner faces AJ or the winner faces Cody for the belt. I loved this. I thought this was great. I thought the way AJ won was so awesome. Like that move, that Avalanche, like. Literally, the Avalanche Styles Clash onto Owens. Then they both roll straight through it, right into the pin. One, two, three. So good. So, so good. And I think AJ wins. 
I think AJ beats LA Knight. LA Knight got the win at WrestleMania, so they go 50-50. AJ gets the win next week, but not only gets the win next week, but gets the title shot where he's going to lose to Cody at Backlash. It's inevitable. Cody ain't losing already. But yeah, that, ladies and germs. It's Friday Night Smackdown. Let's get this poll going a little fast. What did you think of Muckdown? There's a D in that word. I liked it. It was all right. I didn't like it. <clears throat> all right, so we have this and this and that in there. If you're watching on Twitch, you can go vote. But let's refresh these other polls as well. Got the Twitter. We've got the... Did I not do a... It did it again. I go to post the community poll, and then it doesn't actually post. So weird. This is like the fourth time in the last week that it's done this. We do have a threads poll. The threads poll here, 77% liked the show. 15% thought it was just all right, and 8% didn't like it. We got the Twitter poll. 93% liked the show. 6% thought it was just all right. And then finally, the YouTube live poll. 84% liked the show. 16% thought it was just all right, and nobody disliked it. Everybody that voted on Twitch liked the show. With that, guys, I want to say thank you for joining me here. Twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. YouTube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited. And podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. Here in a little while, I'm going to be live with my son on Twitch.tv forward slash Timmy Buddy. We're going to be streaming some Fortnite. Maybe have a couple of other people join us as well. So come hang out with us a little bit later and have some fun. But with that, guys, we'll see you guys next time.